Hello, curious people. Welcome to another um, community event with Curious. Today, today is the last scheduled event. So if you're here, then you're making it to history. It might be, I'm not saying it is, but it might be the last community session in a long, long time. What we're focus on, uh, focusing on in the future is to provide you guys with the right projects so that you're able to put your um, experience together and you're able to showcase your talent, build strong portfolios uh, so that when, you know what Curious does, right? Like we want to create that talent marketplace where we want you guys to meet employers and employers to find you because it's like it's um, a supply demand situation, right? So there is a demand on the employer side. They are looking for talent. You are the supply. So we want to make sure you know how to sell your merchandise, how to sell your portfolio in an effective manner and compete and compete to, to, to land the jobs you're looking for. And in order for you to be able to do this, you need projects. You need to work on projects so that you say, listen, I know how to solve that problem. I have that skill. And this is something I built that showcases that I am able to do that. So that's what we're focusing on supporting you guys with in the future. And this is why we probably will slow down on uh, slow down on uh, community events for a second. But today we wanted to end on a high note because it's a super important topic. And I believe you guys already know it's a super important topic. And I believe you already have a few challenges to talk about. Because you're here, you saw the you saw the the post, you saw the landing page, you saw the learning outcomes, the agenda items, and you go like, "Haha, I need to learn how to do this better." But before we jump into uh, the discussion today, allow me to welcome Merad with us on the call. Merad, how are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me, Mina. Well, thanks for being here. If you haven't met Merit yet, guys, Merit is uh, the co-founder of Curious, and he is now looking after um, the product and engineering uh, uh, function or unit, and that's what's keeping him busy at the moment, and we're super happy to have him here because he has immense experience with interviews. He's been hiring, uh, like he's been hiring almost all of his career. He's been, he's been a manager, he's been a leader, he's been conducting interviews, and and we, we're very happy that he is here with us. So without further ado, let's let's start with a question. Please feel free to unmute. Please feel free to type in the chat the way you like it. If you are able to come on video, that would be fantastic. If you're able to put your video on, that would be awesome. And let's chat about what is the biggest challenge you face? When, when you have a, an, an interview appointment and since you know that you have an interview and all the way until you leave the interview, throughout this process, what is the biggest challenge that you face? I will leave the um, I will leave the um, the screen on um, so that if somebody comes late, they know what we're talking about. So Sarah, he says there are many. Name the top three then, if there are so many. Osama says salary negotiation. Interesting. What about the salary negotiation that you find that you find a little bit challenging? Could you give us a few details? Is it because they push back on um, your expectations, for example, or is it because you don't know how to answer that question? When you say salary negotiation, what do you mean? Osama says a higher bracket was mentioned on the job. Oh, so they promised a bracket, but then they offer me less. Merit, well, why would that happen? Why would a company, in your experience, why would a company say that this job is uh, like we're, we're looking at, I don't know, 20 to 30K. I go to an interview. They say, okay, we're offering you 18. What, what happened here? Yes. Well, can, I, can, I answer, can I answer this question? Go for it. Who's this? Sufyan. I'm Sufyan. Can I answer this question? Sufyan, go for it. <laughs> yes. 
because the uh, company need a professional uh, employee for that uh, for that prominent work so when we are giving interview uh, first of all they have mindset like they are hiring a professional person for that job but uh, when they interviewing us uh, they they imagine that he or she is not a professional or she or she is a less professional so they give uh, salary according to his skills then then why did they pick this person if they think they are not that as professional as they wish them to be because why? because uh, this is this is this is the benefit of company uh, like uh, when company hire hire a person uh, who have less uh, skills uh, after some time uh, they build their skill in that company and uh, his uh, salary for raises like that uh, they mention in start mm mm-hmm. so that's why i think uh... interesting interesting thank you sofian for for uh, for participating with that interesting perspective um mehr what are your thoughts on this one well i i think uh, what sofian said is one part of it uh, potentially where they are putting a bracket and they have a certain standard that they're looking for and what what probably is on their side they haven't made it clear what differentiates the different brackets uh, but there's also to be very Hello. honest there are some bad practices or some or some was saying some Hello. 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 Do you hear me? Yes. How are you, sir? We're good. How are you? Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Are you okay, Muhammad? Hello. Yes, yes, yes. Sir, can you hear me? We can hear you, but you cannot hear us. Uh, actually, there uh, there is an issue to, for to the traffic <laughs> in traffic. So that's why I I think you can not listen me clearly. Hello. All right, Mehrad. Sorry for the interruption. Back to you. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna check with Muhammad what's happening. Okay. Uh yeah. So what I was saying is, there's obviously the case of they put the bracket because they are looking for something in that higher range. It, it's on them for not sharing uh w- what is in that range. But there's also sometimes bad practices by that HR or re- recruiter thinking it's kind of like a I will attract better talent by putting a higher number, but that's never really on the table. So. that is sometimes a bad practice on their side and to be honest it's wasting both people's time not not only the recruiter but even potentially the talent that that is coming for but if we're assuming they are of good intent and there actually was really an upper ta- uh let's say range and that is accurate there's probably something they're looking for in that candidate what they should do a better job is communicate that what is it that they're looking for for that higher let's say the top 10% top 20% uh range but yeah I, it, it could be you know the the gimmicky approach of attracting people but in if they are of good intent and let's say more reputable company there probably is uh really something they're looking for what they probably just don't do well uh in that case they're not communicating what it is why is it that your offer in this case if if you got an offer uh is within that that bracket and what was it we were looking for in a certain candidates that would meet those criteria and at times sometimes it's more so that it's kind of like a probationary period and uh, but again that's more discussion and i think sometimes as part just because we talked about salary negotiation real quick is that sometimes that can be brought up in a way where okay you're because you don't know me well enough you're maybe starting me here but i saw your upper bracket is there maybe we can discuss after the probationary period is there opportunity if i prove myself if i hit those milestones because at the end of the day they might have something on paper they want to see but in reality they're a business if you hit their objectives there's no reason they shouldn't uh, consider you for that higher uh, bracket assuming you're delivering it's maybe just your resume or something's missing me experience wise but if you can deliver 
there's no reason one shouldn't be able to at least bring that up in negotiation because they're the ones who put it out there that this is the upper end. Well, what, what were you expecting that upper end candidate to deliver? And if I can deliver that, then let's let's reassess three months from now. If, if my probation period is three months, let's reassess. Did I hit those objectives that you expect of the higher candidates? And if so, that, you know, that that's a way to spin that salary negotiation where it's, well, you're the ones who claimed that higher number. And at the same time, you now openly told me what objectives I need to hit. Give me three months. <laughs> if I can do it, you know, it's a kind of opening. Um, doesn't always work, but it makes it easier because you're not trying to negotiate off nothing. You're, you have a, a line, you know, they have, and you're working your way, way up there. And if you don't have something right now, it's like, let, let me prove myself. So these, these are potential ways, but I don't want to go too deep because we're just talking about the biggest challenges people face. I mean, can I just make one single point uh, getting into here? Please go for sure. it. Yeah. Uh, like you said, I'll try and switch on the uh, video also. Just try. Since you that mentioned was awesome. I did it last time. <clears throat> May not be perfect, but yes. No! That's Thank awesome. You. I, I Mehrad, uh, good to see you. Let me just uh, make one simple point before I go into the uh, this the, the context of the topic, which is the slide. Firstly, I uh, since I'm I'm from advertising and marketing, so firstly I want to congratulate one uh, aspect of your brand. Curious is a fantastic name. The concoction of the word is fantastic. It just brings a lot of things in mind before you even interact with the brand. So congrats to the team and congrats to Mehra and whoever was part of it. Uh, to the context of this slide that I want to mention here, uh, you know, let me go back to the uh, process all over again. My first question would be uh, from a challenge point of view is that in any interview, whether it's an entry point or you've staged a uh, couple of stages that you go forward with, uh, how do you first break the ice, even if you do a lot of research about the person you're meeting, but it's the, the, the beginning is you kind of uh, have to break the ice, go into a uh, discussion which is very, very informal and then you know win over the entire situation and then go into salary and other things. So first stage, first challenge is break, in, break the ice, establish a nice relationship with the discussion when you're having one, with one, and then go forward. So I'm just asking the basic question, probably going forward, we might add on to some of this. Thank you. I'll switch off my video now. Why? Why? Stay on video. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you for staying on video. Yeah, I'm done. And, and, and thanks for sharing. Thanks for sharing. Mary, any comment from your side? Yeah, I, I just want to make one comment. I, I think you almost hinted or, or you actually showed an example of an icebreaker. You, you started before even getting into what you were going to discuss. Like, wait, let, let me comment on uh, the brand. And, and I, I, yes, it was a bit complimentary, but at the same time, it it's provokes a discussion potentially. Uh, so, <laughs> I mean, that's a potential example where it's, you're not also going directly at Mina or myself if you did research. You're more around, hey, you're working at this company. If you're, let's say, interviewing for that potential company as well, it's like, well, I, I re really love how clever that naming function when we're talking about advertising or marketing or a campaign that, that was done. So you're almost hinting at your recognition of, uh, let's say, that skill set that you, you identified that this plays well with people's psychology. So you're showcasing a skill, but you're doing it through an icebreaker. You're like, Hey, but there are, uh, I would say the king of icebreakers to be honest is, is Mina. Mina, maybe you can uh, give some yeah. examples. <laughs> if you want to know how to win people, there is a, an event that we held last Monday about networking. So go and watch the yes. recording. That's how you think. All right. Um, moving on to, Wait. and and sorry, Stadeep, you want to say something? I was part of that, yes. Yes, yes. So Lipto was there with us and it was a, a fantastic, fantastic session. We were talking Thank about you. how to be charismatic, how to win people, how to not only build professional relationships, but how to maintain them. Um, it was, it, it's worth it. Just go and watch the recording. Um, Thank you. Usama, please let us know if you, if we have answered the question and moving to another, another challenge, Marad, about Confidence and anxiety. Muhammad is asking, um, iterating on, on his sharing, Muhammad is asking how to deal 
with interview anxiety? How to deal with it in this situation. I, I always think that uh, that if you're in that situation and you want to deal with it, then you're a bit too late. Like I always feel like that preparation. So going into an interview with certain at least expectations of what might be there so if you understand this is um it's the first interview or the third interview what might be potentially brought up so yes maybe looking up if there are potential interview questions shared beforehand or, or you've seen it somewhere posted online for this company but even more just going in in terms of the intent if this first interview is my chance to tell them more about myself or so go in with that attitude of my objective is to do x and if my objective is to do X, what would potentially be the best way to do it? So this is where the preparation comes in, right? How, how perfect do I have my one-liner, two-liner, quick intro about me? How, how, how well do I answer a question about kind of my previous work experience? So all of these are things one prepares for uh, in terms of, yes, you know it, it's in your head, it's your life, it's your resume, but preparing an answer to that is different it's like how do i get it tight how do i get it within 30 seconds versus rambling on for 20 minutes just talking about my university years or what project i worked on so all of this comes back to the preparation stage so you're, you're asking about the context of you know how do i build maybe confidence or that anxiety or get rid of that anxiety i think that preparation once you prepare once you've kind of i know how to answer all of these without even having to think about it. I, I don't need to really rethink about my life. I, I, I know the perfect lines. And because I'm ready for it, one, the confidence goes up. And then on the flip side, in that situation, hopefully anxiety should go down. But to be honest, anxiety or stress of performance or, or uh, talking publicly, or I mean, e even the most like well-known entertainers have sometimes said, going onto the stage, there's a little bit of anxiety leading up to it, but usually once they're there, okay, it's autopilot. So the same thing is if you prepare enough for interviews and, and answering questions, that, that is your autopilot kicking in. But we need to train our autopilot in our body <laughs> or in our minds to prepare for, let's say, that interview situation where I can autopilot. This. It, it, if I'm doing 20 interviews in this week because I'm trying to find a job, I shouldn't be stressed going to each one, like just on our nervous system. <laughs> That's going to mess with you psychologically and physically. So I would definitely say like, put that effort instead of doing 20 interviews to 10 and spend that 10 extra half hours or hour that you have preparing. Do, do, and it becomes even easier going forward. So preparation is, is your friend. Um, I hope that answered partially at least what was asked. Let us know, guys. The, the, that answer, the um, question about f f feeling the stress or the unease before before uh, starting a, a job interview. And eventually in the session, we're going to cover a few things about how to be like, you know, to go and, and you're like steady, you know, in the job interview, you're confident in your skin. We're going to cover a few things already. But then, um, Merad, how, how do we make a first good impression i have three to five minutes in the beginning of the interview how do i give people the right or a good impression uh i think there's multiple ways i'll i'll just give from my experience what what i've seen work well uh candidate wise and then just in general best practice um but mina please feel free to add any other um uh, suggestions but I would definitely would say, uh, look, at the end of the day, most people who are applying for this role, they have some type of uh, overlapping, maybe work experience or skill with you potentially. Again, assuming the ones who got pulled into the interview. So if you're shortlisted into that interview, you have to assume the other 10 or so can or whatever number of candidates have those skills. So if that's, if I know this going in, well, how do I stand out more than someone else? But not even just more in terms of my skill, but me as a person, me as, as a character. So it could be uh, as Sudeep did where there was that little comment about the brand. There was a little something that differentiated. I wasn't expecting maybe that, or even sometimes it's that personal story related to the experience. So I'm not saying go in there and start 
telling them about your siblings and, and such. But there might be an interesting case study, a way you worked on something or problem solve, but you're telling it as a way it's about you. You're providing the context rather than just say, in my previous job, I did X, which everyone else says the word X, I did project management, all right? But give me a little bit of that flavor. Ah, you worked on that, I don't know, Sheraton Hotel project. So forever, at least when I'm reviewing end of my week, end of my day, reviewing the candidates, ah, that, that was the story with the interesting thing that happened in the Sheraton Hotel. That's that candidate. Or it might be, right, that example did was, oh, it was the candidate who told us a little bit about our brand, who made it a little lighthearted to start. The, again, these are all, I guess, ways to trigger what they call peaks uh, in an experience. So if we're having a 10 minute, half hour conversation, you need to try and trigger those high end peaks where maybe it's slightly off script, not to say go off completely, but they weren't expecting you to be the one proactive to engage them. How is your day <laughs> versus, um, you know, usually in an interview situation, you're sitting back and you're waiting for the questions. Well, that, you know, provoking their thought, breaking them out of their monotony. They've spent maybe five hours interviewing people right now. How do they remember you? How, how do you even wake them up from, okay, just another interview, just another interview? So that that's par partially some of my suggestion. Mina, please, if there's uh, more to add. Um, not much to add, of course, with, with what you mentioned, Merit, but uh, just to also iterate on that and mention whoever you are interviewing are people. If you're able to win them as people, then you win the whole conversation, basically. Because, and I don't mean to skip forward, we're going to come back to the chat, but what interviews really are, they're just business meetings, right? You are meeting somebody who wants to get their job done. They have an objective. You have an objective. Your objectives are very similar, and this is why you're now going to have this meeting to explore this potential collaboration between two parties. It's a business meeting. And the way you win a business is by winning a person. If you want to win a business deal, win the person you're dealing with, and you have the deal. It's not about being them, them being convinced with your skills. If you are the master of what you do, but you kind of kind of turning them off if you know what i mean by for example showing too much of narcissism or too much too much of confidence or too much of dominance or too much of ego or arrogance you know although you're super good at what you do but now you're you're putting them off because you want to take all the spotlight on your own self and the other way around if you're not able to manifest the right confidence and the right assurance and be able to win their trust in you, then why should they trust you? So you turn them off. They're now disappointed. So you want to manifest that you are the right person to do this collaboration, but not in an agreeable way. You want to make it very clear that you have what it takes what they are looking for, and now they want you. And the way to do this is to just be yourself. Don't behave awkward. If by nature you are the sunshine and roses kind of person, right? So you're loud and you're energetic and, and you're smiling all the time and you're laughing and this and this and that, just be yourself moderately. And if you're the kind of guy who is like lower profile, you know, serious tone kind of person, Still do it, but moderately. By moderately, I mean, do not be too funny that you lose the seriousness that gives trust. And do not be too serious that you start presenting a gloomy version of yourself. And now you look like, you know, depressed. And I'm not trying to sugarcoat things. <laughs> I am trying to say things as they are using the right words, because this is what people get in their minds bias right so all you need to do and again i'm not i'm not i'm not adding to what meredith has said i'm just iterating that all you need to do in those few minutes is to prove that you are here to do business you're happy about this opportunity and you're serious about it being a business opportunity you know so you're optimistic you're passionate about it you were looking forward to it 
and and you're focused and you're sharp and you're turned on and let's speak business. So you're happy. You go in with a happy face. You go in with a smile. I'm very happy we will get to work together because that's the assumption that this is going to go very well for both of us. This is the right way to start a business conversation, right? Let's all put our minds to making this work kind of thing. So you go in there with that spirit, right? But it's a business meeting. So you're you're formal, you are uh, sharp, you know, you, you, you're not you're not stomach, you, you know what you're saying, and so on and so forth. I hope that was helpful. And I see Muhammad, you have your hand up. Is there is there something you want to share? Yes, actually, I wanted to share something. When you say that uh, how to make the, how to make your interview, it's not like just an interv another interviewer. I myself, I'm a trainer and a scrum master, and uh, sometimes I have uh, beneficiaries who I train how to do interviews. Uh, and uh, of course, I'm here because I always have something to learn. Okay, so what I tell them that you have to make a mark, especially at the end of the interview. There is something that many people miss that when the interview finish and the interviewer finish asking you and then they ask you, do you have any question? Unfortunately, many people say, no, thank you. They they doesn't understand that this is this is <clears throat> their their moment to make themselves remarkable. Like ask about this position: is it a vacant or someone else is is leaving? What can I do to make an impact? I mm -hmm. just did an interview two days ago, so I asked them, based on the information I gave you, based on this filtration interview, what do you see that I missed to make a great fit for this role? So I, I reflected that I'm really interested in this role. And I told them if, if I was about to join in one month, what extra skill would you like me to learn? And one thing I want to add is that the follow-up <coughs> follow email yeah. after the interview, not follow-up right away, maybe like a few hours later or one day later, and highlight something of your skill that you did not mention in the email. That's how you leave a mark. What do you think about this? Mm -hmm. Very, very insightful. Uh, I agree with you when you say that when you're asked near the end of the interview, if you have any questions, that's your moment to ask strong, powerful questions, right? So I agree with you 100%. And one should make those questions. If you really want to up your game, take them from the conversation. You're listening very intently to the questions and everything. Bring back something that you've spoken about. So go like, when you asked me this question, I started thinking about how you guys are doing this, you know, or when, when you are faced with these kind of decisions, how do you make these decisions? You know, that makes them think. So 100% agree, Muhammad. Thank you so, so much for, for, the, um, for the input here. And then uh, Hafsa has a new challenge here. Hafsa is asking, when they ask, why did you leave your last job? And House of Finance, this is the biggest challenge. Merit, if if we go through the do's and don'ts or the right answer, what would you say is the idealistic way of answering the question? Why did you leave your last job? Especially if the the real uh, the real reason is not something to be very proud of. So you mean real reason, uh, like what? you got into a fight with the employer? Is that? <laughs> yeah, like I hit my manager in the face, or I I I failed performance reviews three times in a row, or whatever it is. Like something I I wouldn't say is an a normal, um, eventual end of business relationship between my previous employer and myself that ended on good terms. Basically, how do I answer? I would say. That? I would say never bad mouth your current employer or la uh, previous employer. Even if they were the worst, never bad mouth them. Yeah, like, uh, uh, don't, uh, yeah, don't talk uh, bad about your current or previous employer. I mean, think of it in one way. One of the things, if you are making it to the final rounds of an interview, there, there sometimes are those that do are proactive hirers, recruiters, and they, they go and, okay, let me talk to your previous employer. So if you, you decided to badmouth in a way, you don't know what comes up in those conversations. So putting yourself in that situation where you've given power to someone else, uh, what I mean by that, now your previous employer 
it has that situation where they now potentially could sabotage your, your scenario because something came out that you you've been bad mouthing them reputation wise in, in the market um but at, at the same time it's um yeah it's it's an etiquette thing uh i know there are platforms though now i will say that i've seen that people are like anonymously putting uh stuff about employers so i still think it's on employers to be better employers and then better companies so we, we shouldn't uh th think that they have the power to silence people who've had a bad experience or uh, that didn't have a good time. So I think online platforms in that way are, are kind of doing that bad mouth thing. So you don't need to do it openly. Go to those platforms if you really need to vent something. Just don't sabotage your future opportunity because of that. I would I would position the truth in a positive way. Guys, give me an example. Give me a reason where you leave your previous employer and then you go to an interview and then they ask you, why did you leave your previous job? You don't want to lie. You want to be super honest, super transparent, but really impress them. Can I jump in here again? I know I talk too much. You're welcome. <laughs> just, yeah, because I had this question two days ago. I just made an interview. So in my current job, I told you like I'm a trainer and I'm also I'm acting scrum master. I want something to focus on as a scrum master. I'm going into I want to like to go uh, more in technical, more in project management. So I told them this. I told them as a, for my current employer, employer, it's good. The job is good. My teammate is good. But I want something that is more challenging. My job become something like routine it's like a, a routine work and this uh, there is no changing there is no improvement there is no challenges i want something that has challenges i have a plan for myself i bought myself a plan for next year next five years next 10 years in my current job i have reached the maximum level now i want to go to the next challenge to to make a step in my long term uh, plan in my career yeah, it's 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 a perfect ideal textbook kind of answer where your yeah, interviewer would be like, let me finish, let me finish. Where, where the interviewer would go like, okay, thank you very much. They will make a note of it. And then they're going to raise, like pick up the phone, call your previous manager because they used to be high school friends and go like, hey, so how am I used to work with you, right? And the manager say, yeah. And they go like, well, we, I just interviewed him and he said that he left you guys because he was not growing. And then your previous manager starts vending out. Actually, actually, in my case, I asked them to call my, 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 my direct manager and my Muhammad, employer. Muhammad, that's in your case. But the question yeah. is, but what if general, that's not the reason? What if yeah, that's I, the real reason? For me, honest is the best reason. Like, really, ask yourself, your, ask yourself, why are you leaving? Why are you leaving? You, you must first, you must ask your question. You must ask yourself this question. Why am I leaving this employer okay. to the next? Fine. Now I left. What happened, happened. I left for some reason. I regret. I learned from a mistake, whatever it is. Now I'm going to a job interview and they're asking me, why did you leave? How are you going to answer? If you know that if you answer super transparently, you're going to lose that interview. Because what you have to yeah. say is not something that that would be a point on your side, if you know what I mean. That's yeah. that's the, uh, the, and, the problem. And here. I like that you you say the book because I always tell people don't don't give like the ideal answer, even when they ask you like why did you leave your job or what is your weakness. Don't give them something like look as a strength. You have to be smart about it. Yeah. Can 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 I can I give can I give some answer this question. Please, Sufian, go ahead. Yes, there are a lot of reasons. Uh, if personally, I'm, uh, I face a question like, why are you leaving your previous job? And I must reply, maybe uh, I wanted to switch to another industry. The company where I work uh, didn't offer enough professional uh, development opportunities. Or uh, maybe I want to increase in pay. Or maybe the job turned out different from its original description uh, there are a lot of reasons like uh, you wanted to, to, uh, push, to pursue a new challenge or uh, the job made it difficult for you to maintain a work-life balance a lot of reasons like maybe you, know, you have 
some issues with uh, with your manager or with your head there are a lot of reasons but the most common reason is uh, in this era uh, the most common uh, reason uh, in my opinion the most common reason is uh, the pay uh, majority of people uh, leaving the jobs because of less pay. so maybe they have uh, they find a good opportunity uh, so they can get good job mm -hmm. so there are a lot of uh, these are a lot of reasons uh, for leaving previous job yeah how would you reply to the question that's the problem uh, sorry how would you reply to the question Give me a case. Give me, give me one case. Uh, Nadal, I, I saw your hand up, but then I don't know where it went. Like uh, if uh, uh, if uh, when when I giving my interview, uh, the interviewer questioned me. So your previous company uh, didn't offer enough professional development opportunities. So uh, what do you expect from us? Uh, like this question. No. Tell me, tell me, uh, tell me one reason to leave a job or to end up leaving a job All when right. um, it's something you wouldn't want to say in an interview. Wouldn't want to say in. Yeah. Maybe you I have some uh, personal. Maybe I have some personal issues with my uh, head, or with my dean, or with my company owner. Very good. That that sounds complicated. You had some personal differences between you and your colleagues. Uh, yes, most probably. Very good. Very good. How would you, in an interview, say? Uh, this person uh, was doing too well. And I hated it because I was jealous. So I tried to compete with them and I couldn't control my temper. I ended up doing so many mistakes that they ended up firing me. How can you say the story in a positive way? Uh, in a what positive way. Uh, for example, like, like Muhammad in the chat is saying toxic environment, for example. That's another example. How would you say that the environment was toxic in a positive way? In a positive way, uh, I could say, like, uh, I want to switch to another industry or in another company. Like in positive way, in positive way, or a simple or a to the point answer is, I'm not comfortable there. Why? They will instantly ask, what made you uncomfortable? The environment, maybe the environment. Then I put some other reasons like uh, environment or pay or the company. Yeah, what about the environment that you didn't like? Uh, environment, uh, in the environment, there are a lot of things like uh, like uh, some companies don't have, uh, like you are, basically I am a computer scientist. Uh, I'm a master's, uh, computer master in uh, data sciences. So if, uh, if I'm going, to give this answer like uh, i'm not comfortable with the environment like maybe uh, somehow like uh, the where software the software house where i am uh, previously uh, giving my uh, yeah, i'm previously uh, doing a job um, the environment in a sense like uh, i'm not comfortable with colleagues but i uh, in a positive way i could say like simply answer is the environment i am not comfortable Mm -hmm. I can't demonstrate it well, but in a simple way, I just that's the question. Uh, but that's the question. How can we demonstrate it? Let me let me go through. Um, uh, Sofian, come with me. Let's let's take a look at the at what the team is saying in the in the chat. So, Muhammad's a toxic environment. Yeah. So said, can I was say it like if I want to say it in a positive way. Who? We can, I, I can say, I think we can say it in a positive way for toxic environment. Like I was not fitting in, in this environment because I'm someone who uh, who like to work in a team and admire the idea of a, a pack of wall. But there, yeah. there they had this vision of 
a lone eagle where everyone go for himself. They had. Do you hear yourself? You just say yes. Yes, 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 yes. yes. So yes. they are bad now. No, it's not that bad. Awesome. We have different culture with different thinking because in, in this work environment, they preferred that everyone go for himself. Why I see myself thriving in a work environment where, every, where we are like a back of wolf. You are working together as one team instead of like going after each other. Yeah. Right. He's right. Uh, there's another another answer. I I I, I I'm find another answer. Uh, like like uh, how can I demonstrate uh, that I am not comfortable with that environment? Like in positive way, I am answering like uh, my idea uh, for that for a prominent work is different uh, from my colleagues. So that's why I'm not comfortable. You said different, and you said comfortable. That's not positive. Oh, uh, I'm saying like uh, my idea is different. Um, uh, my way of working is different. Uh, so that's why I'm not comfortable. Like uh, I am giving you an example, like uh, uh, where I, I'm working in a company, in a software house, and they, uh, they, they are going to make a game on some pro programming languages like um, they are, uh, making a game on Java. So <clears throat> my idea is to make that game on uh, on some other language like Python or C++ or whatever, any other language. So maybe I put that reason that my idea is not, that they are not giving, uh, uh, they are not using my idea. They are not, uh, not they are uh, my colleague. I tell you. Let me, let me give you a few ideas on, on how to be positive all the time. If the problem was environment, the team, I'm not fitting in, there was discrimination against me. Um, I felt unheard. I felt unseen. I felt unappreciated. Um, it's the way my manager was giving me feedback or blah, blah, blah. It's all about them, right? Like anything that has to do with them, the rule of thumb, first thing we're going to do to position this um, uh, positively is you're not going to mention them at all. Okay? Do not. There is no them in your answer. Yes, yes. Obviously. We're going to focus on what was missing, which is, for example, encouragement, or it was uh, acceptance for my ideas, for example. All right? So we're going to focus on that. We're not going to talk about people. We're going to talk about what's missing. And we're going to transform step number three, turn what was missing into something you're looking for. When you're looking for something, it sounds positive. I'm looking for that, right? Instead of that was missing. So it's, it has this disappointment kind of tone. But when you say I'm looking for something, that's positive. It's futuristic. You're looking forward. So, for example, if you say, I am the kind of team player, so now you're mentioning team player, right? I'm the kind of team player who strives when I receive directional feedback in order for me to know whether what I am producing and all the effort and all the ideas and all the uh, days and nights I'm working, now you're giving them an impression that you're a hard worker. So you said team player, and now you're giving them an impression that you're a hard worker, right? So you want to tell them, see, see, I have potential. So you go like, I am the kind of a team player who strives, who's at their best when I receive that directional feedback and I, I have this sense of collaboration um, uh, with, with my team in order for all of us to learn from each other and move forward and build amazing things, blah, 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 blah. And this is something I'm looking forward to experiencing here. Now you're talking about here. In the entire in the entire answer now, there is no them, there is no problem. It is optimistic and it's talking about now. It's something I wish to find here. They might ask you, so this is something that was not there? And then you go like, I'm really, really looking forward to, to seeing it here and just smile. If the person, if the person doesn't smile back and moves on to the next question, my name is Nancy. 
because that you will, you're now presenting yourself as a wise, contained, determined person. You told them what they want to hear in a positive way. They will very much respect that you put a boundary here that you don't want to talk about the past, but in a positive way and in a confident way. Because the more you speak positively and confidently and futuristically, the more the person trusts you. Give, get, gets that feeling that you're dominant and you're determined and you're ambitious and you're looking forward. And it's not like they did and it's happened and the, 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 you know, no, 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 no. What happened? I left it in the past. Now I know what I am looking for. I'm joining you guys and I really hope that this is something I find here because this is what will make me like, you know, be at my full potential. Let me know if that makes sense. Nidal, I, th I, I see your hand up again. Go for it. Yes, you can hear me now? Yes, we can. Yes, I had some problems uh, on my mic. So uh, I really loved how you answered. Uh, like the answer was brilliant. And what, what about, I have like one question. I will wait for you. Hi. Oh, I hello. Like, hi. I have one question. What if, for example, I don't even want to mention anything about that. And I can just say I left my last job for family reasons. And now I'm able uh, to return to work and I'm excited to join you. Is that like a good question? Give me an example of a real reason um, that you wouldn't want to mention. Toxic environment. It could be anything, actually. Like uh, hmm. even uh, also for someone who is switching uh, jobs or like who is switching, like he was in marketing and after that he wa he want to try, uh, for example, HR. That's like a question or that's a situation also. Like the employee can ask why you are switching jobs and the reason is like uh, the truth is something else but we can just uh, how can we answer this question also like yeah. i tell you nadal I, i'll tell you what i'm worried about here and i will tell you the value of one being honest straightforward without being negative like demonstrated but it's a small world and like Merit mentioned earlier, the easiest thing in the world is to get a, a reference check. Is to go, you know, and get some confirmation, some acknowledgement, what happened. And there is always someone who knows someone who knows someone who knows the story. All of them. So if it's toxic environment, the word toxic environment or, or the expression is a little bit mm, too general. Let me put it this way. It could be like toxic environment could be a lot of stuff, right? But there is an incident or a series of incidents that happened that ended up with Nadal saying, all right, you know what, guys, I'm out of here. I don't want to work with you guys anymore. And then you go to an interview and you go like, hmm, and why did you leave? You go like, well, family reasons. All right, let me pick up the phone, call Nadal's um, uh, old manager or like previous manager. Why did Nadal leave? Ah, there is this problem that happened and this problem happened and this problem happened. Now, as a, a new employer or potential employer, now I know two things about Nadal, not one thing. Now I know that she's a troublemaker because I'm not getting positive feedback from the other side. And I know that she, she hasn't been honest with me. True. You lost the interview. You lost the job opportunity. But if from the very beginning, you are confident enough to say in an indirect way, in a wise way, in a politically correct way, and in a positive way, that whatever was happening there was not going your way and you had the confidence and the guts to leave, look for another opportunity where you're really looking forward to finding what you missed there. Now, if, they, if, if you go like, I'm the kind of person who strives under, mm -hmm, like the example we took earlier is, all right, I'm the if you, uh, uh, potential employer. I'm going to pick up the phone. I'm going to call Nadal's previous manager. I'm going to go. And they were like, yeah, she did this problem, this problem, this problem, this problem. I'm going to go like as an employer. And I'm, I'm not trying to be biased towards my own answer. I'm trying to be human here. I want to hire Nadal because the reason why I'm doing this reference check is because I liked her in the interview. So And then I go like, huh, so this is the story from this side. And this is the story from their side. 
when I called the previous employer, the previous manager, they were negative. They were blaming. They were, right? But Nadal was, now I'm comparing, she was the side of the story that was confident, that was calm, that was wise, that was positive, and was assertive. I like how Nadal described the situation. Now I know two things about Nadal. One, she's good because I like her in the interview. Two, she's not only honest, but she's wise. And she has a positive mindset. You see the difference? With you saying it, it, the real reason is something, but then in the interview, why did you leave the, your previous employer? You give a fictional kind of answer, a made-up answer. Big mistake. Big mistake. True. I really appreciate your answer. And what about the second question that I asked you about like switching, for example, someone who was working in marketing and like one day he realized that I want to try something else, something different and let's go for HR, for example. And, and the, the employer will ask him or her uh, why um, you want to switch your career like now. And the answer is, the real answer is? I want to try something else. I want to explore more. I want to find myself like in other things. Yeah. That's These a good are good answers. Answer. <laughs> yeah. I, and, and it's always good to start the answer from the past. Proving that the fast was not a failure. It was more of saturation or satisfaction. And this is something common, by the way, and this is for everybody. It's well known that when someone achieves something or, or hits the ceiling in, in a given career or, or, a diff, or a given path, they figure out something else to do. They all do that. Bill Gates did that. Steve Jobs did that. Uh, Merit did that. You know, uh, I am about to do that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Um, you know, like this is what happens. People go try something, they build a company or they take a career path or whatever. And then they reach a point, they go like, you know what? I got it. You know, so this is, I got how this works. Challenges are repeating themselves. Now I'm doing it too easily. Now I'm looking for something more challenging. What am I passionate about? Ah, I discovered a new passion. I'm curious about this part of life. What's happening here. I want to leave supply chain and start discovering audio studios how do audio studios work i was a footballer for the first 30 40 years of my life right now i want to discover having a restaurant chain i know how football works done now i want to do something else so when you position it you position the career shift that way you go like listen i've done this and i have achieved that and i did this so the hidden message here is i am intelligent and i'm smart and i'm successful and i was able to achieve so it's not that I'm running away from a failed attempt. So you want to, um, I worked for this company. I tried this role. I tried that role. I, I pretty much know how it works now. And I kind of got saturated. I started looking for new challenges and it caught my eye and my curiosity that area. And then you state the career, right? A product, for example, I got very interested to understand how designing a good user journey would end up with the business making more money. Now what you're manifesting is it's a career shift, but I'm not a junior. I know exactly how it works, you know? So it's another hidden message to the future, to the potential. So again, you're not talking too much about the past, but you're proving that your head and your passion and, you know, your entire being is in that future career. I go like, ah, Nadal, tell me more about product management. Now you're, you're sparkling passion in me now about product management as an interviewer, you know? And 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 this is this is how it goes. Um, and thank you so much for being on video. We lost uh, the deep. I, I I don't know where uh, Sudipto went. Stay on camera. It's good to have people. Now come come back come back. And more people, guys. If you can put your video on, it's great. Uh, where did we stop? What time is it? Oh Lord. Uh, how are you guys finding the conversation? I mean. We're still at slide two, 90 minutes into the, an hour into the, into the sessions or we're, we're, we're midway. How are you finding this? Before we take more questions, I see a lot of positive responses. 
I see words like I see words like brilliant, amazing, excellent, makes sense, perfect, amazing. Thank God I joined. Uh, interesting, exciteful, exciting, fruitful, very useful, insightful. Um, that's that that's awesome. So I, I I'd say this is so far a good use of our time. I hope. And and Jermin says amazing, awesome, awesome. Let's go back and take another challenge. We're still at challenges. Um, and where did we stop? I'm now looking at the examples for for like not so positive reasons of leaving the previous job. But then we stopped at uh, Usama. Usama, you still here, right? Let me check. Are you here? Because we're about to take your question now. Yeah, no, I don't think Osama is here. But we can still take the question quickly. Um, Osama asked, I cleared four interviews for the job. Each interview spanned around an hour or an hour and a half. I am to represent the company in front of Fortune 100 client. Certainly I was competent enough and possessed the requis uh, uh, re like required skills or skill set. Also the potential client interviewed me twice. They were like, you were earning less previously and based on that, you can go back to your previous job and we can move ahead with another candidate. Question to Osama, who I know is not here, so the question is for everybody. Why would you tell your potential employer your previous earnings as in salary or, or, or compensation package in general? Why would you disclose that? Questions for everybody. Why would we disclose that? They keep asking for it. No matter what you say, and trying to avoid this question, they keep insisting on knowing what is your current or previous package. And what happens if you don't say? What, what do you think is going to happen? They're not going to hire you? No, but I think uh, they ask this, and I, I find it uh, at some point, yeah, it's correct, but not in the first interview, maybe later, because they don't want to proceed and keep uh, block time, uh, time blocks, and uh, make time to interview with you and proceed with this and spend a lot of, of money and time on you, and then you expecting much higher, uh, much higher payment. So if they if they sense that you are in the average of the best scale, they will proceed. All right. Hafsa says it would help the recruiter decide what more he can add to it, I guess. This is why they want to know. My question is, why would you tell them? They ask the question. Why are you answering it? Mad, what are you thought? Uh, Nadal, sorry, Nadal, and then, and then we go to Mad. I don't think that telling the previous salary is a good idea to the new employer, because even if you can get more, if you like mention uh, a number, it can like be uh, more a problem to you, not like as an advantage. Mm -hmm. I think. So Nadal is against disclosing the the previous salary, right? And I see, where did it go? Uh, so yeah, uh, Alessandra is saying most interviewers, most interviewers have asked me previous salaries. I always say I'm open to negotiation on this new position. And I reply asking what is the range budget they have approved for the job opening. Kaleen says nothing, cause usually it's a trick question to go to your salary range. It makes it easier on their end to decide what to pay you, this info shouldn't be disclosed. So Kirin and, and Nadal kind of agree. Alessandra is adding, or also researching online the range salary for that position on the city you're applying for. Have success, so I would get more than I was getting previously. Mm -hmm. Merid, what are your thoughts here? Uh, I'll just quickly say something. I think Sad also wanted to say something. So, 
I will say one. I, I like the that um, I think it was Alessandra, uh, the strategy you mentioned, where try and gauge what, what they're potentially looking for and try not to reveal. But I also will flip the, the script a bit in terms of, well, at the end of the day, they want to make sure that they're not going through so many rounds. So you, it's, a, it's a, almost you're playing a game of, I have this information, you have that information, and we want to kind of meet somewhere in the middle. And for them, they want to save their time, right? Going through maybe three rounds of interviews before realizing you're not even in the ballpark. But in reality, I think, I think someone else mentioned, or was that Alessandra again, where understanding what is the range within the city, within that potential role, but again, trying to not be the one who reveals it. But to flip all of this, I've seen lately as well on sometimes like um, screening questions when you're actually applying. Some people even ask you to fill it in. And just to complicate matters more, what, what that sometimes means is they they are even just auto filtering based on people who filled something within a number range before they find the CV. So if you make it to the interview and that question's there, great. There's lots of strategies we can discuss on how you uh, you know get to that same meeting point, but with them kind of revealing more. Um, but at the same time, with technology, we're seeing the, the, the risk of leaving that area blank if it's an automated filter. Uh, your CV might not ever be shown. So that's where I think someone hinted at, well, if you you have a chance to give a range, well, give the higher range of whatever you're looking for. But on top of that, look at what the city kind of, or, or the, the averages for either the company and the city are. So technology in one way is making it worse because they might auto filter and don't even see you if you don't put a number. But at the same time, maybe there's things you can find online and, and data online. Again, use technology to give you the right range within something that's relevant but ideally don't but if it's a technology-based force prompt that you have to fill it in uh that's where it, it gets tricky it's, it's really hard because you don't know if they're using an automated filter and pretty much your whole application if even if you write a cover letter it, it doesn't matter you don't get a chance to be seen because you're automatically filtered out so uh, that's the one risk i'll say is if you want to not fill that in there or, or put a random number uh, you might just disqualify yourself without realizing you just did. So that's, but if you get to the interview, and I think Mina has a few suggestions, always insightful when <laughs> Mina shares like a great answer strategies, but um, sorry, go ahead. And, and I think Saad wanted to comment. Yes, yeah, Saad, are you able to speak? Uh, yes, hello. Hello, hello. Uh, okay. My last interview with like same question and like I don't want to mention the salary, but I did the I don't know exactly like the average salary in the UA because I just came to Dubai. So and I like I answered that the salary is equal to to my skills and my potential that you see in in the CV. So that's my answer. That. That's insightful. And I think it, it goes with what Merit was, was chatting on earlier as well. And yes, about asking for pay slips. Whenever uh, any re recruiter asks you for a pay slip, you have to share it. That's what, that's like if they ask you for, we need to see your pay slip, share with them the pay slip, right? But in an interview, do not answer the question of how much are you, where are you earning or how much was your salary? Don't give the number. Uh, Namarat says, I think when you share your salary, you follow up with your experience or how good of an employee you were previously in a sense where, you know, you will add enough value compared to the range provided. And then Zerhi says, can you say I'm not allowed to share info about company salary due to company policy? I will be glad to share with you my salary expectations for new role in your company. You, you've, you've jumped from a pit to another pit. Because once you say the expectations, they will either say, ah, that's low enough. We were planning to offer more. Now they're asking for less. Or the other way around. Oof, so expensive. Let's figure out another candidate. Best practice when you reach 
there is a reason why I still have this slide on the screen, by the way. It's a business meeting, right? Do you guys know rule number one in negotiation? This is negotiation 101, everybody. If everybody in sales or business development, they already know what I'm going to say. Never be the one stating the first price. Ever heard that rule? Never start with a number. Never be the one to say number first. Watch any two really good businessmen. They keep doing this in the conversation until one of them makes the mistake of saying a number. Now I have something to negotiate on. Now I have an initiation point. Never be the one putting the negotiation point. So how much are you earning? And then you go like with a smile. May I know why you're asking? Very politely, but assertively. May I know why you ask? You're asking me a question. I have the right to know why you're asking me that. It's personal. You're asking me how much I'm earning, right? It's personal. That's what the, that's money in my pocket here. May I, may I know why you're answering? For us to set uh, expectations, you go like, that's a good topic. We, yeah, I agree. It's time for us to set expectations. What should I expect of you? Ooh, recruiter didn't see that one coming. They're not used to that answer. <laughs> but like, yeah, that, that, yeah, let's talk about expectations. How much should I expect of you guys? How much are you budgeting this role for? Now, if the recruiter is super experienced, they're going to hold their grounds and say, well, I would like to know what would you expect? You're like, yeah, but you initiated that role. You had a budget in mind, right? So they will say, yeah, right. You're like, yeah, so tell me. I, I don't know what is the salary scheme of the company. So I'm actually curious to know how much have you budgeted this role for? You see the flipping tables? Now who's asking who at the moment? Just like that, simple. You're polite, but you're assertive and you're very clear, straightforward. That's the best practice of answering that question. And trust me, <laughs> they will fall and tell you the number. You're like, well, we budgeted this uh, role to be between this and that. And they will try to start selling you the role because they want to fill the job because that's their KPI. Now, who's standing in the stronger chair now? That's you. Because you just go, ah, 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 yeah, yeah, give me the higher range. Yeah, there you go. Give me numbers. You're like, okay, so if you say that you've budgeted this between 25 and 28, then I would expect a 28. Why shouldn't I expect a 28? So now you've answered the question. And then you go like, so you expect 28? And you go like, yes, I expect 28. And then they, they send you the offer for 26. And then you reply and say, why isn't it not 28? What am I missing? What am I lacking? You know that you can't, they sent you an offer, they like you, right? And you know that it is budgeted for 28. That number is legit. Push for it. But you didn't start with a number. How helpful was that? And I see, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, guys, I think we've covered all the challenges that were shared. Sani is happy, Sarika is happy. Let me stop the share. May I invite everybody to please have a stand? Hey, Muhammad, I haven't seen you on camera. Thank you for putting your camera on. You're welcome. I was on mobile because my little daughter is making a mess in my welcome studio. Back. This welcome is my back. home office and the studio, but she is making a lot of mess. Man, what do you do for a living? Me? Yeah. Well, I'm starting my own startup in training and consultation and uh, IT services uh, in places. And I also uh, I'm now having a role of uh, team leader and acting scrum master in an international company. I think you know it. It's a telecommunication company, Orange. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But this is exactly. like my home office. I do uh, online meetings with the uh, my potential or current clients for my own startup, and I deliver also training here. Wow, you sound like a busy man. And, and congratulations on the startup. Good luck. Yeah, thank you. Thank Take you. Take it easy on yourself. Maybe we can do something together in future. Maybe, but Muhammad, now that means you're the interviewer now. Like you, you, you're the on the other camp. What are you doing here? I don't understand. 
That means you are the one doing interviews for other people, right? Yes, I did yeah. interviews for people. Yeah, I do. Yeah, but... And actually, I today and next week, I'm doing interviews for people. Yeah, so that means you're on the hiring other... these days. You're with the enemies. You shouldn't be here. No, 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 no. I'm the good guys. I'm with the good guys. You're, you're with the good guys? All right. <laughs> all right. Can, can we all stand up? Even if we can't see you, I will trust that you're stretching, standing up. We've been sitting down for like, what, an hour and 15 minutes? What is that? Uh, it's actually such a good idea standing up. Hello. Does she say, Muhammad, you're on mute, by the way. Does she yes, say? I know I'm mute because she is uh, answering your question. She is giving secret yeah. question to the interviews. I don't I... want her to expose the secret of the business. I see her looking at the uh, looking at the microphone and singing. She's looking at you and smiling. Ahlan, ahlan, ahlan. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. So back to the fact that an interview is a business uh, is 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 a business meeting, right? And Sanaya, thank you for coming on screen. All right, so let me let me give you um, a window from the world of a recruiter. Let's have some empathy here, all right? What is it that they do in their daily life? And then eventually I'll tell you why I'm sharing with you all these things. Do you guys know what is the average uh, interview duration? On average, how long does the job interview last for? Sorry, Muhammad. 30 minutes, 45 minutes, something like this. 40 minutes. 40 minutes. Yeah, so that was close enough. Very good. And then do you know that 65% of interviewers make a decision within the first 10 minutes? 10 minutes. The first impression. Yes, they don't. If they're experienced enough, they wouldn't trust the first impression because they know that you that in that in that context you are the um the candidate you might be nervous right you're still like getting familiar with the environment of the interview and all of that so they leave you for the first five seven ten minutes and then they start evaluating right um and do you know how many recruiters use behavioral assessment questions by behavioral assessment questions we mean uh, what would you do in this situation? What would you do if your manager asked you to do that? You know, things that has to do with the way you do things, the way you express, whether verbally or non-verbally, via behavior and stuff like that. Do you know how many recruiters use these behavioral assessment questions? In percentage. But isn't it uh, depends more on the role itself? In percentage, I think maybe 35. 35% of recruiters use behavioral assessment questions? 85. 85? 30. Almost 65 to 70%. 65 to 70, it's 75. So 75% of the time, you will be asked questions around, how would you react? What would your behavior look like if... What kind of decision will you make if you are in situation this and this and that? And if you are replying with a too much of a confident tone, do you know how many recruiters are likely to reject you? If they feel you're too full of yourself or you're too confident, you're too sure of yourself, that's seven. So I am going to be asked behavioral questions that I need to be confident but humble and having like a growth um, uh, modest mindset within 15 minutes. And, and I need to make sure I am avoiding the biggest mistake that interviewees make. So the asked interviewers what is the biggest mistake that you see interviewees make? And you know what they said? They don't do the research before they come. They don't know enough about the company. They don't know enough about the interviewer. 
They don't know enough about the role. They don't know enough about what they have that will help them to eventually do a good job at that role. They, they come to the interview, but they haven't read enough. They haven't done the research. So what does that mean? That means that, means that number one, you have 15 minutes to prove that you are the perfect fit for the job. Why? Because they're going to make a decision within the first 15 minutes. So you have in the first 15 minutes, you have to make a strong impression that I am the fit for the role. Number two, in order for you to pass all of these behavioral assessment questions, you need to be emotionally intelligent. You need to know how to answer. One of these could be, why did you leave your previous employer? So the, 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 that discussion that we had was about how we can stay positive, contained under pressure. We still give a good answer with the smile, with everything, but a real answer. And last but not least, you need to be prepared for the interview. You need to show, find spaces or places within the, the, in the uh, conversation to prove that you're the right person for the role. So how are we going to do this? That's the question. How are we going to cover these three points? Number one, Meredith and I are going to tell you about the different interview types. And then we're going to tell you how interviews are usually run, the norms of interviews. Uh, cliche questions, how to answer them. Uh, you need to make sure you have this. You need to make sure you have that and so on and so forth. And then how can you prepare successfully for proving that you're the fit for the role? And then if you're open for it, we're going to practice a good interview. So if some of you want to do some role plays, Merit is going to interview you live for, say, five, 10 minutes. He's going to ask you a few questions. And then everybody's going to give you feedback. Your attitude, your tone the words you used, and so on and so forth. And by the way, if you uh, who here joined the resume writing workshop? Uh, was it last week? I think it was last week, right? Who here was there? I'm sure there were a few. Because it was fantastic to see that everybody on the call, we were like 20, 25 people, and people started sharing the resume uh on air and we started giving each other feedback it was fantastic so if we can do the same thing for for interviews that would be that would be amazing all right now let's start with interview types really quickly the first type of of interviews you need to be familiar with is an interview that we call a structured interview and that interview is usually clear or a set of static questions. And it's usually a recruiter, not the hiring manager who's doing that kind of interview. And they're asking you specific questions because if you answer these questions right, they pass you to the hiring manager. So they are behaving like a computer. They ask a question, they see how you answer, they ask a question, they see how you answer. Ta, 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 ta. Mary, the question to you, if structured interviews are run by a recruiter, not the hiring manager, so it's not necessarily that they know everything about the job or they are, you know, like super technical, they're asking general questions maybe around the values or the culture fit or general behavioral kind of assessment questions. Maybe they're asking about qualifications, confirming if the person has the certificate or that or stuff like that. How do I make sure that I pass this interview? whether it's uh, uh, happening through phone, Zoom, in person, in office. I am meeting with HR, I'm meeting with the recruiter, and I want to make sure that I pass that interview. What do I do? Uh, I mean, like most interviews, uh, a bit of that prep work. In, in this case, uh, specifically, like you said, they, they're not at the company, right? So me taking up a few minutes of a limited uh, time interview to be asking specifics that only someone who works at the company knows, I should know better because it's a recruiter. Because they might give you some answer as well, but 
it doesn't line up to what would help you present yourself. So going back to, well, they had the job role description, everything you said, the recruiter is the screening level, right? They're, they want to make sure you're fit on multiple levels, skill, culture. So I would say the best way to be able to kind of pass this level is to really showcase that. So that beyond, like I said, the skills of just confirming, you know, this or, or that, but what's the context potentially? How do you work? The, the, these small elements of, are you outgoing or these are notes they take, right? And they might pass it on to the, the hiring manager or someone within the company. And if they're briefly looking at a bunch of notes, you want something to be in your additional comments, hopefully in a positive sense. Uh, because first of all, if it's not positive, it's probably not even getting to the company to review. But when it gets to the company now, they still maybe get a short list of 10 people. And of those 10 people, do you have that additional? So yes, most likely everyone who's getting to that next level has checked the box in terms of your skill and you match this you know, CV type, education, whatever they're looking for. So you have to assume you're getting past that. But how do you, again, stand out a little more? It's these small elements, but more in terms of you getting a chance to showcase it versus you relying on feeding their information from them. Because in the next, I think you're going to show next, where, where it gets more into the company, the, the, this unstructured, you know, that where, you know, you have to actually take in a lot of information from them. I think you noted, right? Listen actively, right? So the, these are things where now you are in, engaging with the company and it's two ways. It's really you taking in information from them and you regurgitate that. You, you re repurpose that in a way that relates to you or how you can fill that role, right? Where you know you're going into this role, uh, you know, based on the job description uh, and maybe, you know, responsibilities, you, you get, you understand what that means. You're not trying to prove that you know that. Uh, that should have been done on the previous stage. Now it's like, okay, let me hear the challenge you face hitting those objectives, right? That was you actively listening. And then it gives you a brief chance to, you know, highlight how maybe your skills or your experience play perfectly into their context of that simple, simpler question of how are you trying to do X or Y? Um, but and we're getting ahead of ourselves. You were asking about the structure. So I, I would say just preparing well and, and kind of going in, prepare to kind of showcase yourself, you know, within those limited time answers. You, you know, most likely the questions are the basic straightforward ones. Yeah, some of your past experience, some of your skills. How do you sell that story to the recruiter with a little bit of the context of the company based on what you know, not what you rely on the recruiter to tell you. A hundred percent, Mary, and I thank you for that. And I, I want to talk about the purpose now before we move to the third type of interview. And, and there are five of them. Um, so now we, we understand two of them, but then the third one is different in terms of purpose. The difference between job and role this is not a typo. So if you look at the third column, it says purpose. And then with structured interview, it says check for job fit. For unstructured interview, it says check for role fit. If I am a father, what is my job description? I need somebody to tell me now. Let's start writing a job description for a father. A father as in a parent, a parent to a child. Can you please repeat your question? Yes, if you if 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 we are writing a job description for a father, a dad to a child, what would we put in there? Core responsibilities. Maybe Mohammed can chime in. <laughs> can, can you please can you please repeat once your once more, please? Absolutely. The question is if you are writing a job description. So when you're writing a job description, you put requirements, right? Yes, yes. And then you put the main responsibilities of this person. So this person will uh, be responsible for X, Y, Z. They will be liaising with I don't know what. They will be preparing proposals for I don't know who, right? You start listing down some responsibilities and key activities that, that uh, this person uh, will do, right? And you're very specific about them. If you are writing a job description for a father, what would you write there? So Safir says, 
uh, taking care of family. Let's be specific. You don't when you're writing a job description, you don't you don't say taking care of employees, right? You're more specific. Let's be specific with a job description for a father. Uh, Hafsa says providing for the family. So providing. So they might, there has to be food on the table. That's your job. Give them time. So you will say spend at least two hours with them every day or something. Take them out frequently. Very good. Uh, Sanaya says a provider for his basic needs and have a good relationship with a child. Very good. Hafsa says help kids in their studies. And that's a fantastic Job description item, help with studies, yes. Mora says, protect the child, very good. Yes, uh, like uh, providing emotional support and guidance to children at all stages of development. Providing and guidance, fantastic. The safety and security of children. Safety and uh, security. Build, building strong relationships uh, with the children and other family members. Strong um, relationships. Uh, serving as a role model of children and demonstrating responsibility, uh, responsible behavior. Very so, good. I think uh, a strong commitment to family and children or ability to handle stress and pressure of a family. A lot of things in the mind. Right? Very good. Nadal says mentally stable. Nadal, I would say this is... Uh... The required qualifications to become a father. You need to be mentally stable. Um, Mora says financially support the family. Yes, there is. A there are a few things you guys didn't mention. Like for example, uh, in a situation, in a situation where someone has to die, the father should put himself before the kid. There is something we didn't mention around the father loving the child so much that they are very careful behaving around the child to set the right role model. Something we didn't say. And we're not going to say in a job description. Because in a job description, exactly what you guys said now. Helping kids in their studies, protect the child, financially support the family, supervision and control. But there are things you don't write down. There are things that are expected, but they're not written down. That's the difference between the job and the role. The understanding the role is, I hope you guys are with me here. This is what wins you an interview. Understanding the difference between the job and the role is what wins you the interview. This is what wins you the interview. The game changer here. If you are trying, and let me stop the share. I want to see everybody. If you are trying to, to prove that you understand the job and you're meeting the requirements of the job, someone else who understands the role is going to come and take the job away from you. Because your role is not only what's written in the job description. Your role requires you to go extra miles. Why? Because the difference between the job and the role, and I hope you guys are making notes and you can Google this. It's super important. The job has to do with KPIs. So I do X, Y, Z. The role states that I need to do X, Y, Z. But for X to happen, I need to have a W. But I don't have the W. So I'm just going to wait until W comes. Now I'm doing my job or not doing it because there is no job. Your role requires you to figure out how W can happen. How can you help the W happens? So that you get X, so can you do your job? Somebody needs proactive advice or someone needs to initiate a conversation or somebody needs to start a project or somebody needs two hours of my time every day just for, for us to make sure that this problem here has happened. So the person becomes more collaborative. The person be, is able to see the business from a more holistic point of view. It's not about their, my job. My role in this company is to, for example, acquire users. That's my role. My job is to run marketing campaigns and do branding and do this. But my job is to make sure that people are acquired. Why are people coming to us? Because we're providing value. Ah, 
Why don't we start providing that value? Yes, but this is none of your business as an acquisition person, whether it's marketing or growth or whatever, that's not your business. Why are you talking about our core offering? Because if we have that offering, we will be able to acquire people. Now I am playing a role in the company. It's not about the job. It's about the role. When you go to an interview and you are able to, to prove that you understand the role, understand what is the problem you will be able to solve and showcase the attitude that you're willing to play that role, that's what gets you hired. Because your hiring manager is looking for someone to come think outside of the box and help them acquire people in whatever way possible. I wrote it in the job description. I didn't write it in the job description. Just come help me out, solve this problem. And this is the difference between the job and the role. And this is why when you're, when you're speaking with a recruiter, the recruiter is not the hiring manager. The recruiter took the job description from the hiring manager that has a list. And the recruiter is just going with you, checking this list. Does Sanaya know this? Yes. Does she know this? Yes. Does she know this? Okay, now let, let her speak with Marin. But when Marin meets Sanaya, he's not going to be like, does she know this? Does she know this? The recruiter already done that. Marin wants to see if Sanaya has it. You know what I mean? Does she, does she get it? Does she get it? Once he finds someone who gets it, we call this in slang, turned on. Once he finds Sanaya turned on, her head is there. She understands the business. She understands the problem. And she wants to think outside of the box. Outside of the box is a synonym to thinking outside of the job. It's not the job. Forget the job. It's bigger than that. It's my role. To make sure that this child is growing into the most confident, the most determined, the most independent, and the happiest, and the, mo and, and the most joyful kid in the world. That's my role in, as a father. My job is to put food on the table and I'm going to help them with the studies and everything. But if every morning I wake up with a whip and, and, and beat my son, that's not really what I need to do. I'm not setting up this kid for success. So my role as a father, my role as a father is to hug and to encourage and to motivate and to accept unconditionally, right? That's my role as a father. Think like a professional. That's the difference between the job and the role. And my question to Merit now, if, if, if a structured interview is about the recruiter just going through the job description, so is this person a job fit or not? Yes, they meet the requirements. And then the hiring manager is looking at the role. Why in some scenarios, Merit, there is a panel, multiple people assessing that. What's the point? of me going in an interview and then they go like, Mina, you will be meeting this person for an interview. I go like, okay. And then they go like, and this person, and this person, and this person. I go like, whoa, 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 whoa. what is this? Like, what is this? Curious got talent? What's happening? Like, why is there an evaluation panel? Why? Yeah, I like that Curious got talent. By the way, that's- yeah. We should run <laughs> Curious got talent, maybe. <laughs> I was thinking, but, but in reality, if you think of it, those individuals, pulled into a panel have certain insights, but where that insight comes from is probably most likely there is some level collaborating, reporting, or you will be reporting to them. So if you consider them the stakeholders within the company that you will be engaging with. Uh, it doesn't matter what your role is, or whether you're project managing or not, or whether you're a designer, or it, it, it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, we're most likely interacting with individuals. And if you're gonna be part of a team, you're part of this company as an entity, these are the people, I wouldn't even say impressive. These are people, can you communicate with? Can you interact with in a way where it's clear for them when they communicate to you, it, when they are asking you questions, is it easy for you to understand them? Like they're looking for multiple things in, in this situation. And it comes back to the, the idea of the role, right? If, if it was just a job, okay, yes, you checked off all the boxes for a job, but this role is now it goes a bit beyond even what you think the role is, you know, in the vacuum of just you alone. But now in reality, the role is you as a living part of this company. And that means interacting with three, four other people who are already in the company. And if you're coming in to, you know, engage in that role, it needs to like go smoothly. It needs to gel well. And, and 
uh, a good, I guess, organization. We need to think of it as a, uh, maybe it's a bit philosophical, but it's an organism, right? If our, if I don't feel well, right, my, my arm isn't, the rest of my body's messed up. Like I, I maybe I walk with limp, I'm not able to do certain things. So if we think of that organization, well, you're coming in to be the new hand or that arm. And if you're coming in, do you communicate well with the other arm? Do, do you both pick up things together? That's why you're in this situation. It's not to grill you or, or stress you out, because to be honest, there's another <laughs> interview type for that. <laughs> but in this context, it's not that. It, it, don't think, oh, this is the, that situation where they're really trying to uh, drill me and no, it, in reality, they want to see, are you a good fit with the people you're going to be interacting with most likely every day for the next, hopefully, couple of years? Uh, well, weekdays, hopefully, <laughs> but uh, if there's work-life balance. But it, the, the idea is that that's what the context is. You shouldn't go in with the idea that you're, I guess, being stressed out by them. No, but you need to win them over. Like, hey, we, we work well together, everyone. And look at this. This is, you threw something at me. Not only did I answer your question, I, I quickly understood, they understood it as well, that I didn't have to reinterpret my answer for four people. I'm able to communicate to all my stakeholders simply, simply or as complexly, but they still understand it. We can interact well with one another. And I think that gives segue to what you maybe thought this interview was, which is the next one, which is stress. <laughs> what, what, what about stress interview, Merit? What about it? <laughs> the, the, the name uh, it describes what we think it is. I, actually, b- before I say anything, can we ask what others think what a stress uh, interview type is? Uh, we're not talking about stressful. That's a feeling. It's actually like an interview type. All Anyone... this technically, yeah, in the world of talent acquisition and recruitment, scientifically, it's called a stress interview. You guys know what it is? Actually, my definition of stress is lack of knowledge. In my in my definition. Mm-hmm. So, w- what would be the purpose of a stress interview with that definition, in your opinion? Uh, I didn't get like the question. Can you like explain? So, we are asking what is what do you think a stress interview is? And you said for you, stress is lack of knowledge. So my question is, so what would be a purpose of an interview that is called a stress interview if your definition of stress is lack of knowledge? So what would be a stress interview? Oh, okay, okay. Like a stress interview is when the interview, like uh, like put you in a situation that he, he wants to say you're like, your behavior in this situation, how you you will like react in the situation. Very good, very good, very good. Any other idea? Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, stress interview is when uh, the uh, like the employer um, the, sorry the employer the recruiter. Uh, try to make the employee, the potential employee, stressed to see him how he gonna manage uh, if he is in such a situation, like in the future. Yes. Yes, and and more as saying awkward moment within the room by the interviewer. It's like you're being interrogated by intelligence service. Hafsa says the purpose for a stress interview would be to know how would a candidate react while dealing with a difficult colleague. That's a that's a way. That's a way. We're sitting in an interview, and what I'm gonna what I'm got like the scene I'm gonna put now is super realistic. I'm not making this up. I'm not making fun. This happens really. We are in an interview. Everything is going very well. All of a sudden, all of a sudden. Someone cracks the door open, comes in shouting on top of their voice, and they start uh, throwing things around and they take a colleague by the by the tie and start, you know, the, the fight is happening in the middle of the interview. This whole thing is a scene, is an act. They want to see how you're gonna act in this in this situation. For example, actually these things actually happen. 
Man, what is the point of stress interviews? Why are they doing that kind of stuff? It's like... I mean, uh, okay. Sorry, go ahead. No, no. Go, go. Go first. Uh, what I, I was actually going to refer to is, um, like, think think of the word stress. It, it, you know, it's this idea of applying pressure or some type of attention to some object to see kind of like where the breaking point is. Obviously, that's a bit extreme <laughs> to th think that they're trying to break us, but they're actually trying to find where we break down in maybe communication or in, in that in, everything up to this point has been uh, the scenario where our daily lives are not stressful. They are there. Everything's rosy. We've been talking about the job or the role as this perfect picture. You're finding your, you know, this is what you love to do, but let's go back to your, your, you know, parent example, right? That's the ideal. We're saying, well, we want to be a good model for the kid and all of these aspects, but well, no one's telling you about the stressful side of being in that parent. And if, if, and if it's that, well, this is what that's trying to do in terms of this job role as well. Like, we know at the end of the day, it, it, it's the work we're doing. And there are going to be scenarios where things get stressful. Stressful can be through multiple ways. I think uh, Saad mentioned it might be lack of knowledge. Yes, there might be, let's say if it's technical, something you've never encountered before is breaking in the code on the engineering side. And now you need to figure it out. And that's very stressful because there's so much pressure from business and everyone else saying, this isn't working. Something's broken. Same thing with the car breaking down and you're the mechanic. It's your responsibility. But there's a big client engagement that's going to really stress you out. So there's additional stakeholders now applying pressure on you. And if it's not lack of knowledge, it's maybe, uh, or sorry, the breakdown of knowledge because you've never been there. It's you know pushing you to somewhere new. It's maybe breakdown of communication. That is so stressful. The three different parties are almost saying different things. Everyone has their own objectives as a company, a different department. And they're all telling you, this is my priority. This is my priority. What are you going to do in that situation? In an ideal situation, there's no stress. We're all doing our jobs. There's no overlap. There's no conflicting deadlines. There's, but we all know the reality. If you've if you had some work experience, that's what it's like. And that's what they're trying to test for. How do you perform in that situation where communication breaks down? Right. That That is the situation that we don't want to talk about. We don't want to talk about the negatives of our, our business. But the companies that actually sometimes do this stress scenario no, understand that, that this does happen in our company. And we want to be able to bring in people who can handle that pressure or that stress, but not, not in terms of because they're putting pressure on you, but because the situation, it's not an individual putting pressure on you. It's the situation that's putting pressure on all of you. So your colleagues, yes, in this role play, they, they are you know doing what they can to find these stressful pressure points. But in reality, the situation will do that. They're not malicious individuals that we should understand that, that they are an individual like yourself. And in that situation, you have your own objectives and you're trying to you know, get a deadline out of another colleague. How do you, you know, communicate that? How do you, you know, do it respectfully? How do you do it in, in the right tone? Because at the end, that comes back to a little bit of that culture fit. Just because you get stressed out doesn't mean you should start shouting at your colleagues. Right. So that these are things that, uh, you know, you want to harness a, a good, safe space in your culture as a company. And the purpose of this, just to give clarity, is to, you know, show how you can kind of remain positive or at least keep your cool uh, in, in those situations. And and the stakeholders there are there to kind of simulate a potential scenario, maybe. And I, uh, Merit, I think the next and last type of interview, I have a feeling that you would say that's your favorite. I don't know why. Knowing you, you'd say that's my favorite one. And I know I've never spoken about this before. Sorry to put you on spot, but that's what I think. I think the case interview is like, that's, that's Merit. When somebody has been assigned a case, They've been working on it. They built something. And now they come with a hiring manager or a panel and they're discussing. And then the panel is challenging what they worked on. What is that like? What is the purpose of this merit? And most importantly, how can we make the best out of this? After we finish the case study, we're going to spend uh, two or three minutes playing a game 
to understand the interview norms. And then we will con conclude by sharing with you guys a few uh, um, uh, tips on how to prepare. You know, the biggest mistake is lack of research. Biggest mistake that interviewees make is lack of research. We will tell you exactly how to be prepared for, for the interview. So we are uh, we're planning to finish on time. We, I'm, I'm conscious we have 10 minutes to go, so we're planning to finish on time. If you want to stay afterwards and do uh, some uh, role-playing, I'm happy staying until midnight if you guys want to. Um, but then um, uh, we will have to, like, you know, conclude with everything we want to share with you before before the time. That's the most important thing. So that's, in a nutshell, the plan. Merit, back to case interviews. What are they about and how can I make the best out of presenting a case I've worked on? Well, I, I think you hinted at something, best practice, prepare. So it, most likely in, a, in these case kind of situations, you'll want to uh, highlight some of your past experience. What I mean by experience could be even through education, but you're applying that knowledge uh, in a way that you tell that story. The, the case is a chance for you to tell a story of the solution or, or the outcome uh, in terms of, you know, what did it achieve and how did you take those steps to achieve what's needed? Uh, and specifically when, when it's, you know, uh, you're given a problem set, uh, show how you come to that thinking. What's your reasoning? It, sometimes I'm not specifically looking for uh, only just an answer. Uh, I'm looking for your mental model. How did you view the world as to solve this problem? Uh, you know, it could be as simple as, you know, uh, a case study you presented where uh, customer service, it, uh, you're, you're in that role and you need to de-escalate uh, something that's, uh, you know, become out of hand with a customer complaining. Well, what is your approach to it? How do you think of your relationship to customer? All that should be portrayed in your answer. Your answer might be as simple as we're going to ask them to fill the form and uh, submit the feedback. But how do you approach telling them that? And what's your thinking? I want to ensure long-term, uh, you know, uh, return of this customer to our business and our brand. And, you know, I, I don't know what, if they go and tell their friends how bad it was. So all of this shows your, your thought process, even though the outcome might have been as simple as please fill out the form, but show me how you got to that reasoning. Um, and yeah, I, I don't know if that fully answered your question. But I do like these. You did say I, uh, I I do enjoy these because I love to see how people think. That's my personal uh, interest in these types. Of you guys have to see Marit when he is uh, listening to somebody speak about their work. It's like everybody sits back and then it's Marit and the interviewer and the um, interviewee, you know. Um, he always has a lot of questions. Hafsa is asking, do companies reconsider the same candidates that they have interviewed before, like a year or so back, if they're now experienced and skilled and have learned from the mistakes they made in their previous interview? And if not, why? And then Mohammed replies, depends on the company and TA team. Yes, depends if they have a good database. Um, and generally, like if their data practice on the talent side is, is strong, then they're able to always come back to historical data and see the feedback that was left after interviewing these candidates and the reasons why they didn't go or, or they didn't pass and they do sometimes contact them back. All right. So now that we know the types of interviews, let's let's go over a few quick um a few quick can I, can I make a uh, quick interruption here? regarding mm -hmm. the uh, question. In my current company, in the interviews we do to select candidate, we have something that called motivation interview. We want to measure their uh, their motivation to do the work and to do something. So actually, in this case, in this particular case for our program, because we are working on a CSR program. So uh, when someone come to us and he said that I applied the, uh, in the previous cohort and the one before I did not get through, so, so I worked with myself and I want, I'm coming to interview for the like second, third time. We call this as a positive. But in another job I, that I had before, anyone that applied before, they were checking. If he applied, they did not give him any chance. That's why I told, say that it depends on the company. Yep, yep, 100%, 100%. Thanks for sharing, Muhammad. Uh, guys, come here. Everybody who's not looking at the screen, come here. Question. If you are 
doing a great job in an interview, which interview question are you less likely to be asked? If you're doing well, less likely to be asked. What of these two questions, if you're doing well, if you're managing the interview well, which of these questions you shouldn't be asked? Hamad says B. Safir says B. Namalk says B. Arthur says B. Alessandra says B. Hafsa says B. Mora says B. We say B. And the reason being is that if you are able to answer the first question in the right way, they don't need to ask you the second question. Because the, the whole point of the first question is to understand what is it about you that makes you a relevant fit for the role. You want to say I'm relevant? You want to say I'm, I'm, I fit the role? Then when, when, they're asked, when, when you're asked, tell me about yourself. Let me stop the share. This is important. Guys, tell me about yourself is not meant for you to say, I was born in 19, I don't know what, and uh, you know, in that country or that city, and I have two sisters and one brother, and I like swimming. And how is this relevant for the job? It's not. It's not. Tell me about yourself. Well, I am a product manager with three years of experience in the product space. I have worked in that role before where I have I was able to achieve this and this and that. I studied this and I have certificate in this. And in my spare time, I like to follow the podcast of I don't know who, who's talking about, you know, product, blah, 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 blah. And I would say one of my uh, role models would be, I don't know, whoever, Steve Jobs, because the way he, he was looking at product and the way blah, blah, blah. I just told you everything about me, right? What I do for a living, what I do in my spare time, my role model. But it's all relevant. It's all relevant. Why would I say if I should hire you or not? You just told me that you're a great product manager. Now I want to consider you for a product manager role. Uh, can I ask you a question about this? In one second. Okay. No, I mean ask, but in one second. Ah, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, okay, finish. <laughs> one second. <laughs> okay, so, you have one more second. Go for okay. it. Okay. So, uh, in like, tell me about yourself. You mentioned all things that you, like, you skilled in. Like, uh, like I'm a software engineer and I am a video maker too. Like, I can m mention my video makers in, in a software engineer interviews or not. Yeah, it, it, it's as if you are indirectly listing the job description for the role you're applying to. So say, for example, the role in the job description when you applied, it said the ability to work under pressure, uh, mastery in uh, SQL, and uh, has managed a team before, for example. And then I tell you, tell me about yourself. You go like, I am this and this and I'm, I, I know how to work under pressure. And I, I have three courses rounds with SQL where I have built those dashboards, blah, 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 blah. And I've been managing teams for the past four years. I'm telling you about myself, myself now, but what I'm actually doing is listing everything that the job needs. So why would I ask you, why should we hire you? I just told you, I'm super relevant to the role. Do you get my point? Yes. Cool. Next one. If an interview finishes earlier than scheduled, so say you are invited to an interview that is an hour long and it finished earlier after 35 minutes, 40 minutes, what does that mean? Does this mean the interview went well? Or does this mean you need to start applying again to other roles? Or it depends on, on the type of the interview. C. So Arthur says C, Sura says C, Sane says C, Hafs says C. Who was talking now? Sari, right? That was you. Namarak says C. Hafsa says C. Yeah. yeah. It's C. Because, and Saad says C, because if it's the interviewer, if the interviewer is the recruiter, so it's a structured interview and it finishes early, that's not good. 
because that means there are a lot of no's, a lot of deal breakers in the in the in the middle. So they didn't find what they're looking for. They found you to be irrelevant. But if it's with the hiring manager, for example, I'm not saying that's the case. Sometimes, sometimes, if it's with the hiring with the hiring manager, you will able you are able to impress them in that unstructured interview. They will like this person understands the role. I'm able to make a decision in 20, 25 minutes. This is the person I'm looking for. So it depends. So don't panic if the interview finishes earlier. Don't panic. And don't go and buy yourself a car to celebrate. Just wait until you figure out what the next step is. If someone asks you about what your biggest weakness is, how should you answer that question? Should you be super honest and transparent? Like, to be honest, my biggest weakness, I suck at time management. I mean, man, I never meet deadlines. Unbelievable. I, I've been trying for 10, 15 years. I've been receiving feedback constantly that I, I suck at time management. And you know what? I think I'm hopeless with time management. There is no way I'm going to ever be able to manage my time properly. That's me being honest and transparent. Or you want to do it in a way that highlights a strength. So for example, you say uh, a weakness. A weakness is that I really get lost in whatever I'm doing. I want to give it my best. Um, I want to learn a lot. I want to go to the to the depth of something. And I tend to ask a lot of people about stuff to get their opinion because I'm, I'm really curious and I want to embrace whatever activity I'm making. So sometimes I lose track of time. But for me to be able to to hit or, or to nail to nail uh, the thing on the head. Or you guys might have another idea on how to answer that question. It's not A, it's not B, it's something else in your head. So I am seeing Hafsa says B, Alessandra says B, Arthur says B, Namarak says B, Jermin says B, Saad says B, Mora B, Fatima B, Sanaya says B. Muhammad has a different idea. Muhammad, go for it. Yes. And this uh, particular question, I believe that now companies have reached a little bit where it's like, it's sorry. Okay. They have reached the level that when you are trying to give a strength and weakness, it's now exposed. Okay. So when you are giving weakness, don't give a weakness that's something that give a bad image about yourself. But you can make a strength if you are aware of where you need to be developed. Like if you are if you are applying for a software engineering job or if you are applying maybe for a front-end developer job, you can say, I'm a great front-end developer job or I'm a great software engineer, but I believe that I'm, I'm not that good in like data structure or in algorithms. I believe that I need to train to them. After you tell that your weakness in the rule, what is your weakness in this rule? This is the question. And after you tell them the weakness, Tell them what you have done and what you are doing to improve in this weakness you are doing, you are talking about. Like for I me, I agree 100%. Yes. I agree 100%. May I make a suggestion? Yeah. I'm, I'm going to use the same example. Uh, the way I would say it is uh, I have an edge as a front end engineer. And what I am working on now is to develop my skills for back end engineering. So you wouldn't say I am weak or I need development. You're saying I'm working on it. So it comes across as a strength, as a positive side, right? So I agree. And, and Safir also says B, so I agree. Why did you leave your previous employer? I think we nailed this on the head already. And now let's go to the last piece. I'm going to cover this really quickly just for the sake of time, two minutes to highlight how can you prepare for a role and then we're going to stop the recording and we're staying if you guys have any questions you need to practice whatever it is we are staying um you need to prepare three things or you need to be well informed about three different things all right the first thing you need to prepare for is about the company you need to understand exactly what the company you are about to work for is doing what do we mean by that? We mean that you need to understand. You need to understand how does that company make money? And you need to understand who is the target audience? Who is the customer? Who is the client of that company? And you need to know what kind of culture that company is. So go to the website, find working for us or working with us or our culture or something like that. And you read that part, the values because you're gonna use these three things throughout the entire interviewing process. You need to understand how the company is making money. I will tell you why in a second. 
you need to understand the audience that the company is serving, the target market. And this is super important. And of course, the value is because you're going to keep using them during the interview. Now, let's understand the role. How would your potential role, this role you're applying to, impactful to the company, i.e., how would the role you're about to play and what are your ideas to use this role to make money to the company? How is your role going to generate money for the company? The second thing is, do you understand what success looks like for this role? You must understand. And then the, the third and last thing about your role is you need to understand who is going to be your manager and who's going to be the team and who are going to be the stakeholders working with you. As in, you go to LinkedIn and you understand who's this, who's this, who's that, because eventually these will be your interviewing manager. This will be your panel. That would be the people um, uh, present in the stress interview, if there is, or in the case interview, if there is, right? And then the most uh, interesting part, your perspective about yourself. Introduce yourself. Introduce yourself is about you positioning yourself. What are you in the market? Not who, are, not who you are. Nobody cares who you are. Everybody cares what you are. What skills? What do you bring to the table? What do you bring to the table? Why are you special? What makes you special? You are a talent for sale. Why would we buy you? It's a business deal right? So what is your offering? So you need to understand your value in the market. If you want to be able to highlight your strength and, and sell yourself pro pro properly in the interview, you need to sell yourself. So you need to always say, this is a USP. This is a point of, uh, of difference. Uh, this is an edge I have, right? Second thing is, what are you bringing to the table? What are all the new ideas, the knowledge, the experience? What makes you relevant to the company point number one could make you special but not necessarily relevant i have mba very good but does this role require mba not necessarily so you need to mention you 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 have mba but then what are you bringing to the table how are you going to support this company and last but not least what makes you the person for this role if you are able to prepare yourself really well before an interview you know exactly what the company is about you know exactly what the role is about and you know exactly what are you about and how are you relevant to both the company and the role you will be able to say the right thing to answer questions the right way and hopefully land land the interview uh well now we are seven minutes over time so i'm going to pause here for a second and we're, we're going to take your questions but I'm going to pause the recording. So for those who are watching the recording, I love you guys very much. We wish you were here. You would have got to ask all your questions now because we're staying for like an hour or so. But we'll see you hopefully next time because that was the last planned uh, live event. So I'm not sure when this is going to happen next, but uh, you guys know how to how to reach us. Guys, do not drop. I There is one link I need to share with you where you can reach Merit and I if you want to book um, uh, mentorship sessions with us before we drop and Muhammad is asking where the recording will be. The recording will be shared in an email that will be sent, I think, tomorrow morning. You'll receive an email with the link to the recording. We upload it to YouTube. You'll be able to find it there. All right. So with this being said, I'm going to stop the recording. For those watching the recording, we'll see you guys later. For us here, stay for one more second.